good afternoon. Another uh, weather-wise, a bit miserable, but generally who cares? Right, we're back in the motorhome. It's the second weekend away when we've been in it. The first time we went to the South Port, just have a, which is not very far from us in the northwest of England, and uh, we just wanted to try out the the motor to see what uh, what's what and where things go and how things work. I've made a few alterations which I'll no doubt show you later on. But um, we're going up to a place called Pateley Bridge in Yorkshire. So us being Lanc Lancastrians <laughs> from Lancashire, we're going into Yorkshire so we're going to sneak in. Anyway, we're going up to a temporary holiday site run by the um, Camping and Caravan Club but specifically by a DA which is a district association linked to the Camping and Caravan Club called the Leeds miles, DA. Junction 29, take the M65 exit to Burnley, Blackburn. That's where me and you were going, and done. And um, the Leeds DA run quite a lot of events over, over the year, obviously not since Covid but um, now Covid's um, slowly lifting up and we've got a bit more freedom then we're giving it a little bit more. We're going to meet our friends Andy and June and you've seen quite a few times on the video. They're already there. And hopefully we're going to have a good time and I'll show you around um, Pateley Bridge as well and what that may have to offer you if you decide to um, come up to this part of the woods as they say. Um, right, catch you later. Like most temporary holiday sites, in normal times you can just turn up but at the present time, due to COVID restrictions, it's better to book online if possible. Or just ring up the site operator. You can find lots of information on the Out and About app, which is free download for iOS or Android. You must, however, be a member of the Camping and Caravanning Club in order to use this service. Now then, where's our friends? <laughs> He's here. Hello. <laughs> Uh, didn't jump out and greet us. What's going on? That's what we did actually. Yeah, I was I was right. Have you done it? Hi. Yeah. Now some of these temporary holiday sites uh, allow open fires as long as they're off the floor. I've just, had the, just asked the wardens, can we have a fire? And they said, yeah, no problem. Off the floor, fire blanket at the side of it and also a bucket of water. And we've got to have it out, the fire out by 11 o'clock. So it's just about quarter to nine. So we'll have it for a couple of hours and then um, set it out and put it away, no doubt. As um, stipulated by the uh, warden of the site, we have a fire blanket. Bucket of water and be on the safe side, a fire extinguisher as well. And to top it off, some Crabby's whiskey. Single because he's a tight git. I love it with some um, Coca Cola in it, mate. I love every Coca Cola in it. No, I'm not doing that. It's called a Philistine. I'm a Philistine, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, old boy. <laughs> Cheers, old boy. All the rest. All the rest. Thanks, Ben. Good morning. Nice and early today. Well, nine, ten o'clock. Um, so June's got some eggs and sausage on, and uh, both of us in these vans haven't got a grill. 
So I'm trying something that I've used before, many years ago, to do some toast. Uh, I'll show you where it is. Bit precariously balanced, but I thought I'd try it outside here first just to see if anything happens and uh, I don't want to burn things down. At least here I can, you know, cope with it. Well, it's sort of doing it. Well, that was my first toast done. It's not done it too bad, actually. Second piece going on. There's yeah, she official butterer and sausage and eggerer. There we have it. I've done the toast. I'll probably just burn the bread really more than anything else on this little um, toaster, this gas bottle. A bit dodgy, to be honest with you. Uh, that's been more stable. I think it's better off with them, with them flat cookers, you know, the long, long, tall, or the long um, gas bottles. I'll bring that next time, I think. Uh, but generally, very low gas. Um, it doesn't take long to do both sides. So, as I said before, I've got a feeling I've just burnt the toast more than anything else. But Andy and June have some bread, and they said it tastes nice. So it's my turn to try June's ooh, um, sausage and egg with burnt bread. <laughs> Sauce eggs are alright, bread's not bad, um, I wouldn't say it was completely toasted but it'll do for what we've uh, what we've done. As I said, we haven't got um, any grills in these vans so next best thing I suppose. Right, raining today, we're going to have a walk into Paley Bridge to see where it has to offer for us lot and maybe you if you decide to turn up and have a look round here. Pelly Bridge is a small market town in Nidderdale in the borough of Harrogate, North Yorkshire, England. Historically part of the West Riding of Yorkshire, it lies on the River Nid. It's in the Yorkshire Dales but just outside of Yorkshire Dales National Park. The town has a number of pubs and a variety of small shops. Cafes, a traditional butcher's, and a pizza shop, a local spa, and a petrol station. It has a lovely recreational area for the children. The town boasts that it has the oldest sweet shop in England. 1827. The sweet shop is now housed in one of the earliest buildings in Paley Bridge dating from 1661. The Tour de Yorkshire normally runs through Pertley Bridge. Pertley Bridge seems to be just mainly one street, but it seems to have quite a lot to offer. The town is within the Nidderdale area of outstanding national beauty. The town was listed in both the 2017 and 2018 Sunday Times reports on best places to live in Northern England. The local tourist authority bills it as the perfect place to start your exploration of the Yorkshire Dales. After hard days mooching, it's nice to have a sit down and have a brew and a piece of cake. There's Paley Bridge for you, if you fancy coming along and spending a day or a weekend here. Well, walk along the River Nid. Um, I'm not exactly sure where we're walking, to be honest with you. But apparently it leads to a pub that's got seating. So fingers crossed, we can sit down and have a pint. Nice little walk to the pub there, by our little countryside 
path. But on the road, the road has no path whatsoever from um, Fairley Bridge. This is the safest way. These uh, temporary holiday sites are um, basically basic. They, uh, they've got to have um, somewhere to tip your toilet, somewhere to tip your grey water, you know, your dish water, and somewhere you can fill up with the fresh drinking water. But otherwise, that's all there is on here, really. Oh, and somewhere to um, get rid of your rubbish. This is a shore ground. Uh, I think it's mainly used for agriculture more than anything else. And it has actually what has toilets, men and ladies, obviously. But at the moment they're uh, shut due to COVID restrictions. So when you come on one of these sites that don't normally have toilets anyway on site, then you've got to use your own toilet. So no big deal. <laughs> Somebody's tickling my face. A big long stick. I'm talking to the uh, organisers of this um, temporary holiday site. They said they can fit up to about 400 units on it. So it's quite a big site actually. And uh, they range from uh, motorhomes to camper vans to caravans. <laughs> this is a big ass competition, June. The last Dales Agricultural Show of the Year, the Nidderdale Show, is held annually on the show ground by the River Nid, which at present we're camped on. The show usually attracts over 14,000 visitors each year, but it's on hold at the moment due to COVID restrictions. Because this is part of the Camping and Caravaning Club, you're also allowed tents. Now the main thing, as I said before, regarding these sites, uh, you've really got to put, bring your own sanitation. So no doubt the tents are probably with the caravans, which will no doubt have toilets inside them. Either that or you've got a pop-up tent and put a toilet inside that, whichever it is. Good morning. Um, weather's a bit better today, Sunday morning. We'll be going home soon, but um, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, that I'll show you a few modifications that I've done in the van since we've bought it. So one of the first ones I've done is actually put a bracket on the uh, outside wall of the uh, van uh, so I can put the television on. I'll show you. Quite simple, basically. Now what I do is, when I, it won't quite fit. If you look at the, the TV, it won't quite fit in the gap, as you can see there. So what I do is, when I'm travelling, I just, there's a little screw here, back there, that there. And uh, I just swing it over so it's um, it's uh, vertical. And then I just push it back and it's lovely. And the nice little curtain that was already here, just covers it over. <laughs> and to power that uh, TV, 12 volt, um, I've put a couple of sockets in. One is uh, this USB one, WSB one. And the other one is where the socket, uh, the 12 volt socket fits into the, uh, the cigarette type lighter one. Now, um, I've got uh, another bracket that I can fix together, but I'm not sure what to do. Might just leave them there like that, or I might actually put them here. Just cut a couple of holes, stick them there. I'm not sure yet. At the moment, they're out of way, really. They're sort of out of sight, out of mind type of thing. Just actually, the wires are actually coming through. And uh, the aerial which isn't a mod, that little aerial there. It's quite strong, actually, but um, it's not put on the roof. I don't fancy putting one on the roof. We don't watch a great deal of telly. So uh, it's just a matter of uh, sticking the TV for the time being. Quite a good signal around this area. And back of the TV, really. These little lights came with the van. Quite bright. They're halogen, though. And um, I've not changed these yet, but I've changed them over the bed. I'll show you in a minute. Now these uh, over the bed are, uh, were halogen but I've changed them for uh, low LED wattage power. Uh, just basically straight change there. I've not hidden these things yet because there's a conduit under here but when I took the conduit off to add it, it's got a little channel in the middle so it means that you've just one wire in each side fits in so these here are a bit, little bit bulky. I'll get some conduit and hide them after eventually. But uh, what I like about these is um, the touch. And when you touch them again, See how bright they've gone? You touch them again, they go off. Touch them again. 
you touch me again and the dim and they're off one of the other reasons i got these little led lights is because it's got usb socket and uh, we can charge our phones up here or if for instance if you um if you sort of power pack or whatever it may be they've got a shelf above us that i can put it on um when i first got the uh the motorhome it had nothing like that in here it had one den socket like a german socket which was um, not adequate enough for us and one last modification in the garage area for the time being is um i had a um fluorescent light in here and i took that out and i've put one of these strip lights in quite good actually straight swap and it um it branched up quite well but i've got two of these and i'm going to put one over there so it uh, illuminates the garage even more especially when i'm crawling inside there i need to look at different things especially in the back there where the uh, the boiler is and that's the uh, three modifications so far for the time being i've got more modifications coming along which no doubt i'll show you um thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully i'll see you on the next one see you again